Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. This is day five of the Leak Code Dairy Challenge in March. Hit the like button, subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm. Uh, yeah, today I ran a couple of miles, not, uh, but I, f I finally, I think that's one thing that I do want to talk about a little bit and feel free to skip ahead, is sometimes you get stuck, um, you know, uh, uh, I mean, in, in, in strength training, for example, you get stuck do being, you know, ego lifting, right? What people are saying, you know, you do maybe your the numbers on the weight is high, but you're doing like weird reps or something like you're benching, but you you know, you you're not doing all full range of motion, and then the question is like why, right? And the same thing goes for running for me, um, and I I get into this trap sometimes, right? Where, um, it's not necessarily even ego lifting per se. It's just that. Not directly, anyway. It is that last year I was in great shape, and now I'm still trying to run at those paces, but I haven't been putting in the work. I mean, you could say it was because I got injured. I'm a little bit better now, by the way. Uh, like I can turning left is a little bit tricky, but going straight I can run. So I've been running on a treadmill today. Uh, I went about three miles easy, and at a very very slow pace. I mean, you you know. Um, if uh, I want to do metric as well, but I actually don't know the math. But I've been running twelve minute one mile. Um, that's probably like I don't know. What's that? Like ten minute kilometer or something? Maybe a little bit less. No, it's, what is it like six right? So forty percent. Um, I don't know. Like eight nine minutes a, a kilometer. Whatever it is, you can do plug in the calculator. Um, so it's way slow, but it's also just me trying to do more miles, more running, but easy right and of course for me for running there are different uh, systems that that enables you to be faster and what i mean by that is that you're not limited just by your muscular strength or whatever you're also you're sometimes limited by either your muscular endurance or just cardio fitness right with respect to like how how much my my heart can beat and and uh, getting oxygen in the right place right and for me um when during the the end of or uh, like the the peak of my running i was at probably like a, like a little bit under 10 minutes a little bit faster than 10 minutes per mile with respect to my easy run right meaning that that is the pace that i can do without thinking i can do all day right and honestly the last couple of uh tries i've been kind of just running kind of hard um even as i was like even at these paces that were supposed to be easy when you know um, and as a result, I'm just way more tired and whatever. But today, I felt very easy. Like, I mean, it is supposed to be easy, but it actually felt easy and not just that it's supposed to be easy. And I was able to kind of get three miles. I had to go somewhere afterwards. Otherwise, I probably could have gone even uh, more. Um, but, you know, the key there is that it is very easy to kind of let your ego, uh, whether it's your pass or just some number, some even number to kind of, uh, take advantage, right? But you have to figure out what your goals are, and and yeah, even with respect to lead code and stuff like that, it's okay to you know, like you don't have to, um, like not every training needs to be that hard, right? Um, it, your your fitness or how good you are is a progression over time, and yeah, it's not just about doing hard things every day necessarily um it's also about like making sure you learn giving your your brain and everything t time to learn and everything like that right so i don't know just kind of get, get me, uh, i want to give you some perspective uh, and something that even i thought like i said i fought, fell into it and today i was like wow that's right <laughs> like this is what easy uh pace feels like you know uh and I was like, ah, I could have gone, like, I was struggling at faster paces, but, I mean, obviously. But I was like, oh, at this pace, I can actually probably go, like, for another, you know, like, I could probably do a half marathon or something at this pace, right? Which I haven't felt that good physically in a while. So, I don't know. Anyway, but, I mean, and, of course, uh, th that is not to say that I hope it stays there. You know, hopefully we'll make progression, but all of that is taking uh, different feedback and all these things. So, um, yeah. Okay. All that said, so long intro. Let's get, uh, let's take a look at today's farm. 
Uh, I do, uh, if you're new to the channel, and uh, maybe I should have said that a little bit earlier. If you're new to the channel, I do talk about my, my training sometimes because like, hopefully this this particular day is a little bit more obvious, but it's just kind of uh, drawing the parallel between the things that we struggle on and things uh, and try to work out how to get better, you know, day by day and so forth. So yeah, uh, okay. Let's actually start at today's problem. Now we have 2579 count total number of colored cells. Okay. There exists an inf infinity large to do, 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 do. you're given a positive integer n indicating that you must do the following routine for n minutes and the first minute call any of arbitrary cell unit cell blue every minute color uh every uncolored cell that touches a blue cell okay so i mean it seems like they they want you to make like a diamond or maybe a, a i don't know like a square but you know this way or uh you know vertically uh, I mean, I don't think there's anything that tricky about it per se. No, I don't know the answer yet, just to be clear. But it's just like, I feel like this pattern, you could probably figure out how to uh, um, determine maybe. I don't know. We'll see if it's easy, but the idea is right, right? I think there are a couple of ways that I would think about it. The, the first way, or, or one of the first ideas that I would have is to kind of write it brute force and simulate the first, say, n is equal to 10 and see if I could get any pattern. I don't know that I recommend it right off the bat because I think maybe there is some like principle or symmetry or geometry that we can take advantage of before we up we get to that point. But it's something that I do like telling people to kind of think about because, um, especially if you struggle with more difficult problems, well, it's just one another tool in your another tool in your tool set. Okay, so let's look at one, and I think the way that I would maybe think about it is also just. Um, um, just seeing if there's any pattern, right? And for that, I am actually going to bring up the drawing board. Um, usually I bring up the drawing board for explanations, but today, well, there's no explanation yet because I don't know it, but I want to see if I can draw out, um, uh, uh, you know, like draw something and, and see if I can figure out a pattern. Usually, I mean, that's why I also have like a notebook and a pencil here um, to kind of do that, but of course, you can't see me. I, mean, I, I don't know. I don't have a setup for it, like a vertical or whatever, you know. But this is easier to see, right? So, okay. So, one is one, right? Uh, I mean, uh, it's in the thing. And then two is this, right? And we could draw it this way. Three, okay. So, we have to do, 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 right? And then we have a layer that's, you know. And then maybe it already feels like I, I sense a pattern, even if we don't necessarily count that much, right? So here in the inner ring, we have one, we have one plus four, maybe. So one plus four, because that, that, that didn't change. But we have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Huh, plus eight, right? Mm, is that enough for me to say? Um, hmm, I, I wonder where... where I mean, the the thing is that if you have um you know concerns, you could just draw one more. But it seems like, because because I would also say that a lot of geometric things, right? Um, it it the smaller numbers are actually edge cases, um, sometimes pun intended, but maybe not in this case. And what I mean by that is that because there are just with the smaller ends, there are degenerate edge cases where you know maybe they merge together or something. For example. Oh, uh, here you could think of this as like a, almost like a weird uh, three by three thing parameter thing, right? Like I'm tilting my head a little bit so that you could see like this is length three or something, right? Um, where here it's two, but the reason why um, is because you don't have the middle piece, right? So that's why it's a little bit awkward. Um, but yeah, and then ne next you may think that okay, well next thing is just gonna be four, right? Maybe. Right. Uh, I don't want to draw it again, so I'm just trying to actually let me just copy this. I'm a little bit lazy. Right. Okay. Um, right. So then now you you could imagine the four piece a little bit. One. Oops. I took my head and drew it quick. So like you have one, two, three, four. Right. Um, and then one, two, three, four. Right. Do 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 do. Yeah, yeah. So then now you have four, like almost like a a. a, a a square with four on each side except for that the corners of course are used for two sides so then now how would that look like right well you we have four corners plus um the middle piece which is two times four right so that's going to be 12 right so now you have one plus four plus eight plus 12 i think 
and and that is enough for me, right? Because I think now, then the answer is, and like I said, um, it's very possible that the small ends are degenerate cases. Um, so the one is a case, right? One plus four. Well, the four fits because then it's just four times zero times four, right? And then four times, uh, oh, sorry, four plus zero times four, four plus one times four. And the pattern becomes a little bit straightforward to see because the next one you have the four corners and then you have three in the middle and there you go. And that's really the idea. And then we just sum it up, right? Maybe. What's the end? And it's pretty big. Um... Is there a close form for this, right? I, I think that's maybe the next thing that we should have done. But, uh, but I think, honestly, you can do an end loop and this is fast enough for this problem, right? Because um, n goes to 10 to the fifth. So, okay. Let me, I, I don't, honestly, I don't know if there's a closed form yet. But um, but we'll write the, the first thing and I think we can probably actually work out the closed form really quickly. But, uh, but... But for the first thing, let's not write the closed form. We'll talk about some optimizations for silliness, but that's maybe lead code slash pre-calculation collected, right? So here we go, um, total is equal to zero, right? Um, and then for maybe i in range from one to n, inclusive, right? Total, uh, so if i is equal to one, then total we add one. Uh, else if i is equal to 2 No, I mean actually that's it right else then total we add it by i or uh, four corners plus um, i times uh, Four right Yeah for each of the sides so oh well, it's i but it's not because for two it's i minus two right sorry oops yeah so then that's it, right? Uh, and it'll fit, it'll be fast enough probably. Uh, it'll give us an answer. I think the first thing that we want to do uh, is, I mean, and you, ooh, 1800 day streak, yeah, yeah. I said yesterday that I'll forget today and I did forget today, so I don't know. But it's a nice celebration, I guess. It's a nice round number, even number. But yeah, uh, another thing that you can realize is that, um, huh, I did it before. Another thing that you realize is that, well, it's almost like a prefix sum cache, right? So here you can maybe, um, yeah. Uh, this is probably, you could use this with a for loop, but I just want to do this illustration, is that you have some n, right? So then now you just recursively go, well, if n is equal to one, then we just return one. Otherwise we return go of n minus one plus uh, four plus, n minus 2 times 4, right? So that would be the recursive thing. And of course, and I'm not going to go over the, the dynamic programming, whatever, too much this time. But we'll just slap a cache into it so that we memorize. And that's it, right? So then now we can return go of n. And uh, and yeah, and actually you could even call it by itself. But the reason why I don't and I put it outside is because then now um, all the answers share the state, right? And you can see it's a bit faster though. Still, actually, I, hmm, I thought it would be fast enough, frankly, but not a big deal, right? But then now we can maybe examine it a little bit for the coast form. So this is like one way to kind of thing because, you know, it just shares the, the thing, um, shares the, uh, the cache across different inputs, right? But, but yeah, uh, so then now, okay, let's, let's revisit this, right? So what is the formula about this? This is the formula, if you kind of write it in ASCII art, um, is uh, 1 plus 4, or 1 plus the summation of um, 4 plus n minus 2 times 4, or technically i. Uh, and we had that loop, right? For, for i in range of n, right? Or, for i from 2 to n, right? Something like this. I mean, you could write it out with sigma and whatever, uh, but clearly I'm a little bit lazy at this point, right? Um, and then now you can think, well, the first thing to do is we could take out the 4. So it's 4, uh, so it's one, uh, 1 plus 4 times uh, n minus 1, right? Um, so you have this thing. Um, you could take out the multiply by 4, right? Not all the way out here, but you can still 
take it out. So then it's four times the summation of this thing. And then now you, have, you just have a regular sum, right? Uh, you have a, a sum from um, 2 to n, and that is just... Yeah, I mean, that is just pretty straightforward, right? Basically, basically this is uh, the sum. Uh, I mean, yeah, you have to be really careful to be not uh, uh, succumb to off by one. Maybe not that careful, but I know I'm bad at it. That's why I have to be very careful, right? So, yeah, so that would be just... So we could do the math, right? So sum from <laughs> 1 to n is just you go to n times n plus 1 over 2, right? Did I get that right? Because uh, I, I always forget with plus or minus 1. So, I, so what I do is that I just plug in a number, right? Uh, because for example, one, two, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. So if n is 3, then 3 plus, or oh, sorry, 3 times 4 over 2 is 6. So, so this is correct. Again, like I said, I'm bad at it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so then now, um, so this is a little bit awkward as well, right? Because is I, so this is one to n. Um, in this case, yeah, I could actually this is the same as going from one to n minus one of um, minus one, right? Yeah, and then you can add one again. So that is just from zero to n minus two, which is the same as do 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 right? Um, because we subtract to zero, and then now it is just this formula, right? So here, um, you just plug it in, right? So now this is n minus two. So then this is n minus one, or m, you know. So this is the formula for the things inside. Hopefully, I, I didn't get it. I mean, it's very possible that I get this wrong, honestly, just because I'm very careless. And and I'm writing ASCII art instead of um, instead of uh, on paper. On paper, I'm a little bit better because I actually write it out maybe more more mathematically uh, in the language I know. But yeah, but that's basically it. Then uh, if if I'm not off by one, then we just plug it in, and we'll be pretty happy. Uh, but you can also see that uh, one more thing that you can see is that there's to do it by two so we can just take this out so yeah um, yeah uh, let's give it a quick summit uh, let me get rid of this go thing it's a little confusing All right yeah and now we're good so you can figure out the course form from that uh, yeah um, basically show you all the ways um, I don't know you could probably also have googled it how did past Larry did it Huh. Hmm. I mean, obviously, it reduces to the same thing, but I don't. I don't remember how to do it. Wait. Uh, let's see. Maybe there is, is there another way of doing it. Hmm. How did I came up with that one? Past Larry. Maybe past Larry just saw it. I didn't see it though. N times n plus one over two. Um. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I could see how. I actually see something, but I don't know that that's right. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I I honestly have no idea how I did it last time, so it is what it is. But yeah, but how I did it this time, maybe it's a little bit more uh, explanatory. So yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I don't have to go over complexity. This is just m some multiplication. Um, you could probably even reduce that, I suppose. Um, I don't know. Huh. I mean, you, you you can you could definitely just write it out and reduce some stuff, but uh, I'm not going to. I'm a little bit lazy. So yeah, uh, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Stay good. Stay healthy. Take mental health. I'll see y'all later. And take care. Bye bye.